Ah, guys, I am so sorry I'm so late for the Tuesday morning sports card hobby news show. It is Tuesday night probably when this is coming out. You might be watching the World Series when I drop this. But hey, stick around. We're going to talk about some hobby news stuff. Hello to all my sports card collector, investor, all of my collectibles friends out there in the universe. How the heck is everybody doing? It is Tuesday. It is Tuesday. It's almost Wednesday. It's a big game for the Braves and the Astros going on right now. And I believe the Mavericks and the Heat are playing. Got some sports stuff going on. And did you see my New Orleans Saints shock the Tampa Bay Bucks with all of our guys out? Jameis Winston goes out with a, with torn ACL, it looks like. It's going to be rough. We had Trevor Simeon come in, and to be honest, I, I wasn't feeling very hopeful uh, when our third-string quarterback, Taysom Hill, also out. And so, yeah, it was uh, – did not think we were going to win that game. But, you know, defense played strong, and here we are. Any given Sunday, we are hanging tough. Before we get into the news, guys, if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. I think we're only about 140 or so subscribers away from 13,000, which would be exciting to get to. And the like button if you like what you hear. And maybe a little tappity tap on the notification bell if you want to be notified every time a video comes out. I would appreciate it very much. All right, Sports Collectors Daily, always a great resource for hobby news, but then also great products and different things. Check them out. I will put their website link in the video description. They reported that Cade Cunningham, the first overall pick to the Detroit Pistons, he has signed an exclusive autograph deal, and you're going to be shocked at who this company is with the exclusive deal, Fanatics. The Senate will decide your fate. I am the Senate. Fanatics doing their thing, locking up big time athletes for autograph deals. Who did you think it was going to be? So Cade Cunningham, if you're a big Cade Cunningham fan, that's where the autographs are going to flow. In his first game, the Pistons did get the win. In 19 minutes, he had two points, seven boards, and two assists. So the assumption, of course, is that's going to get better. He's got to get into the game a little bit. Let him Let him feel his way out. And hopefully he can dig the Pistons kind of out of the abyss. You know, the NBA is highly, highly talented. Detroit's going to need a few more pieces for sure. But uh, here's to Cade Cunningham for being a, a foundational piece. Heritage Auctions has a huge Michael Jordan memorabilia lot that is for sale on auction, including a 94 bronze statue called the Spirit. I talked to my wife about getting this one, and she shot down the idea. I thought the, the, the giant bronze statue in the man cave would be wicked. Not that I can afford it. It's a joke, guys. But still, wouldn't it be pretty sweet? Anyway, I was just kind of testing her, like, could maybe I throw a bid on it? No, that is a negative. That is a negative. So, But anyway, I thought this was cool. There's a bunch of cool items. Uh, another item that they have is a, a ticket, and this is something that we've heard more about here, a game ticket that's graded by PSA, and it's the first time that Jordan and Kobe played each other. It's from 96, obviously. And the ticket thing I've seen on you know, Sports Card Investor or some other channels are talking about game use tickets. You know, game tickets big for big time games. Some of them are autographed, et cetera. Uh, but kind of a neat idea. The one thing, and I haven't bought any tickets yet. Um, I The one thing that I do like about them, I was just kind of researching, looking at them, and it does kind of take you back to that time period sometimes with like, I was looking at one the other day and it was from the 90s and it was basically like, it was early 90s and it was talking about how you could win like a Magnavox VCR, you know, and there's there's little tidbits on the actual ticket that take you back to that time period. So that thing, that was kind of cool. And I'm not saying that every ticket is like that, but some of the ones I saw, it did kind of show you like the sponsors and stuff from the, the from those particular times. That was neat. Anyway, I don't know if you guys are into tickets, let me know in the comments. I know, like I said, I know SCI put out a video on it. He spent a bunch of money. On, on tickets. Is that something you're into? I think they're cool. I don't own any yet. And I, you know, as far as, you know, getting into it, I have so many other things I'm, I'm into uh, right now that I think that's going to go on the back burner for a while, but they are cool. Heritage Auction just opened a 4,200 item lot, their fall auction. And one piece in there that I thought was really awesome is a Mickey Mantle jersey that is signed in the collar and it's from 1954. And from what it says here is that it's the earliest known jersey, game used jersey for Mickey Mantle. Going back to 1954, they think that that's the earliest one that is, that's left 
essentially, or at least that's popped up. So I thought that was kind of a cool, um, you know, a cool piece, something that you don't see very much. Um, there was a huge Jackie Robinson autographed jersey that was sold for millions of dollars uh, a month or two ago. This one is expected, it says in the article, according to the article, it's expected to sell for $800,000 or more. Mickey Mantle being that big time Yankee, you know, that fan base is rabid. Um, I'll be watching that one. That'll be interesting to kind of see where that goes. A lot of the sports memorabilia stuff, it blows my mind you know, that how, how much it goes for. And, and we're going to get to kind of a little bit more on that in a minute. And the next headline kind of talks more about where this is headed. Uh, Golden has hired away, I believe her name is Danielle Moss from Christie's Auctions. And she oversaw 50 plus people on a team across 15 sales verticals, according to the article. And one thing um, that a quote from the CEO of Golden, Ross Hoffman, and I thought this was really interesting. He says, as collectibles such as trading cards, comic books, and NFTs are increasingly viewed through the same lens of tradition as traditional art, it has become increasingly important to have people, have staff on board, so essentially Danielle, who understands customers interested in both. And I think that that is really eye-opening because you hear about that all the time. You've heard of, you know, Gary V has talked about that where, hey, you know, sports cards and comic books, some of these things are, are, you know, people's art. They would rather have, you know, an 86 Jordan rookie card, PSA 9 or 10, than maybe have an expensive piece of art. And I think that that is a, it's a very, you know, kind of interesting observation. Now you've got that extended out to NFTs and digital assets where you have people flexing millions of dollars on crypto punks, which is just basically like an eight bit figure, you know, that's, it's a little nothing, but it's, it was one of the first NFTs or the first project, NFT project. And I heard Gary Vee say recently that out of all of his, you know, various investments and ventures that he's in, that he is most confident in his CryptoPunks NFT investments, which again, those were made in 2017. There was 10,000 of them made. They're actually given away, believe it or not, when they first come, came out. This is CryptoPunks I'm talking about. And it's just, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's just little faces, uh, digital faces, eight, you know, like JPEGs. Um, you know, it looks like a uh, old Nintendo game type JPEG. I understand kind of the thought behind, you know, the coolness of it being like the first NFT project and assuming NFTs become like a huge, huge ordeal in this digital world. That's really what's pushing up the speculation on those things. And so, um, but yeah, I mean, the, the fact that he said that, you know, he's most confident in a crypto punk that was created four years ago. Um, but that just kind of tells you kind of where we're at as a, as a society. And I think that the same could go for, you know, someone that buys a Jordan rookie card PSA 10, if they spend a few hundred thousand dollars on it. Maybe they feel more confident just because of the, the, the relative scarcity. I know there's 320 of those or, you know, around about. So it's not a one of one or anything like that. But the main point is, is that people are looking at these types of assets in the same way that they would look at a rare painting or something. And, and the traditional art market annually, it's a, it's a, it's about a $60 billion a year market. It's a huge, huge market, especially in comparison to sports cards, sports memorabilia, how, how it used to be. Now, sports cards, sports memorabilia, NFTs and all this stuff is now becoming a big part of that conversation, whereas it used to not be. But, you know, we saw a report that came out from that. There was a market, market research company that came out with a report. I can't remember the name of it, but I reported on it maybe a month ago or so. And it was saying how the expectation was in five years that it could be an 80, 90 billion dollar a year industry uh, with fanatics involved and so forth. And so, you know, and I think that's aggressive. I think that's an aggressive number, but who knows, you know? And so, you know, that's, but again, that's where you see kind of these multi-million dollar, you know, sports memorabilia auctions and all the, you know, the cards and everything else. Uh, but I don't know. What do you guys think? What are your thoughts on, you know, this high end stuff? It seems to be just continuing to roll on. I always kind of think when I see this, especially when I see like Heritage with a 4,200 lot, you know, there's 4,200 items. And, you know, you see PWCC, huge items. Heritage has got, you know, a thousand items. 
you know, where is the fatigue with some of the high-end stuff? And it's just not there. We haven't seen it. Not to say that there's not, you know, drop off in price. There's not some bargains to be had here and there, but I kind of wonder about that. Does this, does this get so competitive between Golden and Christie's and Heritage and, um, you know, PWCC and all the auction houses that, you know, there are opportunities, some, some little cracks in there. Um, so I don't know. Let me, guys, let me know what you think. What are your thoughts on all of this stuff? Are you bidding on all these big items? Are you the one buying all this stuff? It's not me. Uh, let me know in the comments. Remember, stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.